Hi guys, in this tutorial I'll be walking you through a program that I've already written this morning that calculates the area of some simple geometric shapes — circle, triangle, square, rectangle — using JavaScript and HTML5. So as you can see here, we're using our HTML form to handle this. We allow the user to select between the shapes using a drop-down — so circle, triangle, square, rectangle. When they do, we've written a method that will update this form to suit the shape. So for example, triangles don't require radius, so they require base and height, squares require side, and rectangles require length and width. So we'll go to square. Uh, the actual input is of type number, so the default uh, number type. What that does is it adds these little arrows here so that we can go up and down. We could also use the keyboard arrow keys, so I'm using them at the moment. And if you want to add some fractions, you can type it in using the keyboard. So 5.5, .5. the calculated area is 30.25. Good, so let's look at the code. First thing that you'll need to do is create a blank text document. So in this case, I've got area.html. The important part is the .html. Uh, we should prefix HTML files with this doc type. HTML. If you don't do that, it'll probably still work, but to be consistent, you should do it. We'll need to open the HTML tag. We can add a head element. Inside the head element, we have things like meta and title. The only meta that I use is the character set, char set equals UTF-8. If you don't do that, again, it will still work, but uh, it might throw a warning. The title, that represents what's shown in the browser at the top of the uh, tab. So title, area of a shape is what's shown here, area of a shape. It's good to have that. Close the head element. Now onto the body. So in the, inside the body, we'll be using a form to do all our... Uh, so all of this is a form, right? Each form requires an action, so that's Basically, what will happen when the user clicks the button, clicks the Submit button, or in this case, the Calculate Area button. So we want to run some JavaScript here, so we prefix that with JavaScript colon, and then we type in the method name, the function name, Calculate Area with parentheses. We also want to add functionality to allow the form to update when they change between the shapes. So on change will equal, again, it'll be a function call, a function called Update Form. Onto our HTML elements. Each element we should probably add a label to. So the label is just this, this text that appears before the element. If you, if you didn't have it, it would still work, but it'd be not very user-friendly, I suspect. So each label requires four and an ID. ID of what is the label for. So this label is for the ID, for the element with the ID, ID shapes, which is this element. This is what the user will see, select the shape, close the label tag. So to handle drop-downs in HTML, we can use the select element. So give it an ID, the same ID as what you've used here. And this is where we put all our options, what they can select. So each option will require a value, that's what we refer to in the JavaScript code. So to keep it simple, circle, triangle, square, rectangle. Uh, and this is what is shown to the actual user. So if I go circle 333, refresh the program, you'll see that circle 333 is in there. So put that back. Selected just means what's selected by default. So if I change that to triangles and refresh this, you'll see that triangle is the default selected. Put that back. Okay, close that select tag. Add some breaks here just to add some white space. If we don't do that, it'll just squeeze it all together. It doesn't look very nice. So you can add break tags to space it out a bit. Now we need to handle the inputs for each of the shapes. So I've done that just by putting a div. So I've got a div with an ID of ID inputs circle, ID inputs triangle, ID inputs square, and so on. The only one visible at the beginning is the circle, so we hide all the others by putting this hidden. So inside those divs, just at the end, we can write hidden, and it will, uh, HTML5 will automatically hide all of those. 
If we didn't do that, let's have a look. You can see that there's the circle up here, as well as the triangle stuff down here. A bit confusing, so that's why we're hiding everything else. Inside here we'll need labels for each of our inputs. Let's do the circle first. So it requires a radius, with a label, and the input. So the input, give that an ID. I've just prefixed all the IDs with ID underscore, just to make it easier to program. Type is of number, I think I mentioned that before. That adds those little arrow keys and adds some uh, validation. So for example, if I try to enter D into the radius and hit calculate area, it'll say, please enter a number. So that's pretty cool. I've added a minimum because you can't have a, a negative radius, can you? If we didn't have that, minimum equals that, then I could technically go below below zero. It will still work in the calculation, but it doesn't make sense, does it, to have a minus three radius. So that's why I've added the minimum, min equals zero. So if I try to go below zero, oops, nothing will happen. If I try entering in a number below zero, calculate area, please select a value that is no less than zero. So that's what that does. Pretty cool. Step, that basically allows us to input decimal, input fractions. If we didn't have that, so just say step equals that, this will still work. But if I try to go 3.4, it'll say that's not valid because the default step equals one. It must be an integer. If we put, for example, step equals 0 0.1 and reset that, it'll go up in steps of 0.1 and work, right? But if I tried to go 0.31 and calculate area, it'll give me a warning. The two nearest valid values are 0.3 and 0.4. So to get around that, to allow the user to put anything in, we just put any. And this here is just the output. This is just a uh, visual output of the uh, formula for calculating the area. So the area of a tri the area of a circle is pi r squared. To represent pi in HTML, you just do that, ampersand pi semicolon. You'll have to look all of those up. I had to look that one up. Radius is just r. To get a superscript, so the squared as such, you can just use sup. Oops. You can just use sup and close the sup. If you didn't do that, I suspect you know what would happen. Pi r2. Bit confusing. So that's why we put the, sup, the superscript in there. So I've put these formulas in H2 element, which is just a heading, just to make it stand out a little bit. And I've also emphasized them, EM, which means they are usually in italics. So the EM element represents stress emphasis of its content. In this case, it's represented by italics. Okay, so onto our triangle. Again, you need to grab all the inputs. For triangles, we need to know the base and the height. Just make sure to update these IDs. So ID base, ID base, ID height, ID height. Otherwise, it's pretty much identical. Uh, the triangle is hidden. Make sure you include that. The area for a triangle is base times height divided by two. We can represent that in HTML using this ampersand FRASL, fraction slash. And this is optional, but you can superscript the BH and subscript the two. So all that's doing is go to triangle. All it's doing is raising this BH above the center and lowering the two. If you didn't have it, that would be fine, but just to make it look a bit, little bit nicer. For our square, again, the same sort of thing. It needs to be hidden. Just make sure you update all these IDs. Otherwise, you can just copy and paste. Uh, ID side, ID side. Again, it's a type number, all the rest of it. The area for a square is just side squared, side by side. And finally, our rectangle. Uh, we need to know the length and the width, so we'll need a couple of inputs here. Again, just copy and paste and change, update the relevant information. ID length, ID width, they're all numbers. And very simple formula, area equals LW, length times width. Finally, we need our submit button. You can give that a value. If you don't give it a value, it will just default to whatever the default browser setting is, so let's try that. Submit query, doesn't sound very cool. So put in the value, calculate area. There we go. 
And where will we display our output? Well, we can just use a paragraph, that's what I'm using, so p, give it an ID so that we can refer to it in JavaScript, ID, output. So that's where we'll output our area when we calculate it. Okay, so on to our functions. So update form is called when they change between shapes. So the first thing that I'd like to do is hide all the inputs. Uh, you could not do that. You could, for example, when they click circle, you could hide the other inputs and display circle. When they select triangle, you could hide all the other inputs and display triangle, but it's just easier to hide everything and then show the thing that's valid. So to do that, we go document.get get element by ID, get the ID for each of the inputs, so input circle, set its hidden property, so dot hidden equals true, that means it'll be hidden. Do that for each of them, so ID inputs triangle, hidden equals true, and so on. A lot of this is just copy and paste and modifying. Then we need to get the selected shape and show its inputs. So create a variable here, let shape equals document dot get element by ID, ID shapes dot value. ID shapes refers to our, our drop down, doesn't it? So if you go back up here, ID shapes, so our select element here, and the value is just this, so that's what we're getting, getting the circle, triangle, square, rectangle. Head back down to our function, update form. Okay, so we're getting its value and assigning it to this variable. Then we can use a switch statement, you could use if conditions if you want to, but switch is fine. Switch shape, so that will be the, the uh, string, either circle, triangle, square, or rectangle. In the case of a circle, we want to get the element by ID, ID inputs circle, set its hidden uh, property to false, that means it'll be showing. So exactly what we've done up here, except that we're changing this to false. So for circles, we want to show circles. For triangles, we want to show tri the triangle inputs. Remember, this refers to the div with all the inputs inside it. For squares, we want to show the square inputs. And for rectangles, we want to show the rectangle inputs. Pretty simple stuff. Make sure you include this break at each of the cases. If you don't, it will uh, flow through to the next case. So you need a break between each of these. Okay, that's all we need to do for our update form. For our calculate area, so that's what happens when they click the submit button. We need to get the selected shape, as we did before. So let shape equal all of that. Get its value, so that'll be circle, triangle, rectangle, or square. And then we need to calculate the shape's area. So let's set up a variable called area. Initialize that with zero. Why I've done that is so that if they load this program and don't put anything in and hit calculate area, the area will be zero, which makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, then we switch between the shapes. So in the case of circle, we need to get the radius. So we can get that from the document, document get element by ID, ID radius dot value. So that's the user inputted radius. To calculate the area, we just go math pi. That's a constant, you can use the math library. Math dot pi times radius times radius to get radius squared. You could use the math power function or POW function, uh, but it's unnecessary. Radius times radius is simple. Make sure to write break there. For triangles, we need to get the base. So doing the same sort of thing, except we change the ID. So we need to get the base, we need to get the height. The area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. Break. So we're just in this switch statement, we're only calculating the area based on the user input. Later we'll deal with the area, our output it or whatever. For squares, we need to get the side. So again, similar sort of thing, just change the ID. And the area of a square is side times side, side squared. For a rectangle, we need to get the length and the width. The area of a rectangle is length times width. Break. This last break is optional, it doesn't really matter because there's nothing beyond it, but it's good to put in there for consistency. And finally, now that we've calculated the area, we need to output the area. So output the area. So all we have to do is grab that output uh, paragraph that we created before, so id output. Uh, it's the one that was up here. See, we've got a paragraph with id 
ID output. So document get element by ID ID output. To set text within a paragraph or within an element, all we have to do is go dot inner HTML equals, and then what are we going to output? You could just output the area. So the area that we calculated. Let's try that. So circle, let me just reset that. Circle radius of one, calculate area, it just gives you a number, which might be fairly obvious, but to make it a bit more user friendly, we could add some text before it. So area equals space, all that in uh, all that as a string in quotes, plus the calculated area. And finally we need to close all our tags, script, body, HTML. Reset that. So when we calculate the area, it should say area equals that. Change to a triangle, base equals 3.4, height equals 12, the area equals that. And there we go, that's the end of our program. Feel free to download this code, I'll put a link in the description below. Play with it to your heart's content. If you were to add to this, add some more shapes, all you would have to do is go up to the select, so the drop down, and add another option. So for example, if you wanted to add an octagon, you just need to update the value, Oc octagon, update the what's displayed. So if we reset that, there should be an octagon in this list. Yep, it won't do anything because we haven't added any functionality yet. Uh, then you could go down and create its own div. So just under where we've got uh, ID inputs rectangle, you'd have to put ID inputs octagon. Same sort of thing. I don't know exactly what you need to know in order to calculate the area of an octagon, probably the side length or maybe the radius, depending on whether it's a perfect octagon or not. Uh, we'd also need to hide the octagon here. So just do that, ID inputs octagon, right? get the selected shape and show its inputs. So we need to add to the switch statements, case equals octagon, do the same, do the same sort of thing. To calculate the area, case octagon, you'd have to grab the inputs and calculate the area. And that's it. That's all you'd have to do to add a new shape. Anyway, feel free to download that and have a play. And I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.